Hey, what's up? This is Toby and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a cool AR TikTok filter just like this little cute bird you're seeing here right now. So in order to create this effect, you will need a TikTok account, a computer and of course your phone in order to try it out and in order to show it to your friends. All right, so let's get going by going to effecthouse.tiktok.com. So EffectHouse is the application that you're going to need. It's by TikTok and you can also just log in with your TikTok account here and just download the program. And as you can see, there are many kind of effects that you can do, some kind of face filters, some 3D stuff, but uh, also some cool augmented reality. And so you need to download and install this application. And before we jump into it, I just want to quickly mention that also under this learn tab, there are many learning resources, many tutorials provided by TikTok. So you can already go in there and learn any stuff you want. Um, so not only for augmented reality, but also for some kind of other stuff. Um, what I really like about this is that you also have hand tracking and head tracking and all this stuff. But this is nothing we are going to talk about right now. We are going to jump into the Effect House application. This is what it's going to look like if you open it up. And then we want to select template here and then go to um, world and choose the AR placement object. By the way, if you don't find any of the links um, they are all in the video description, so you will be able to follow along nicely. Okay, so here we are basically in the scene. And before we get started, let me just quickly explain all these windows you are seeing right here. So on the right side, there's the preview window. And here you can uh, preview your effect by choosing different video templates. For example, we could um, go to environment for, this is very useful for augmented reality. And instead of being on the floor, uh, we take this table and then we can see what our effect would look like on the table. We can also click around here, make the object move and just find out how our augmented reality experience will look like. Then there's the scene view in the middle with the right mouse button. We can pan around holding the middle mouse button. We can move around and we can also zoom. And with the left mouse button, we can just um, select objects and um, move them around. And there are also these few icons up here. So this is for moving, rotating and scaling and also um, changing between the local and the world axis depending on what kind of transformation you want to do. On the left side, we have the hierarchy. These are all the objects we have in the scene. So there's the camera, this will be our phone. And then there's a light. And there's also the object which is hidden beneath the AR plane and the bounding box. And you can already see here, do not touch. Uh, so these are these little four boxes right here and uh, this big box here. Um, so this is basically the uh, box in which the AR experience is going to happen. And um, the reason why you shouldn't touch this is because otherwise the effect is not going to be displayed properly anymore. And also, as we can see, we're moving around and what we're actually doing is not moving the object around, but rather the whole scene. And um, if we're gonna start moving here, then everything is gonna fall apart. So there's, however, the object that says replace me. And this is this um, skeleton uh, render root here. This is this little alien we are looking at right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace it. But before we do that, just quickly take a look at the visual scripting uh, down here. We're not going to talk much about this today. This is basically the logic. So if we are able to move something here, or if we're going to play animation, everything is going to happen in here. We could also do something with finger tracking that let's say we hold our hand um, in front of this uh, alien, then it will maybe start jumping or some other stuff. But this is something more advanced. If you want to know more about this, write it in the comments and we're going to do another tutorial. So for now, we want to replace this um, little alien with another 3D object. So how we do that? You can, of course, go ahead and um, model your object using something like Blender. Uh, so this is something where you could potentially do everything by yourself. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to go to Sketchfab, which is a 3D 
um, model platform where you can download thousands of thousands of 3D models for free. So you're gonna go to sketchfab.com and um, click on search 3D models. We're gonna select others and animated and then maybe also select animals and pets. And now we can scroll through on some, uh, until we find something that we like. Um, we gotta be careful, however, that as soon as, oof, the spider freaks me out a bit, but as soon as there is uh, this dollar symbol here, that means that it's a paid asset, but there are also plenty of free ones. For example, let's see if we scroll through a bit. Um, oh, like this cool turtle on a skateboard. So I've been already searching through a bit. Oh, there's also a wolf. Um, and I found this cute rabbit here. It's, it's super cute and I really like it. It's much better than the spider. Um, and what we then need to do is we need to download it. And here's something very important. As um, this is a filter, the size of the object, the size of the whole scene cannot be over five megabytes. So if we take a look here, we have a, uh, in the Effect House uh, app, we have a five megabyte limit. This is quite small, but again, it's supposed to be used very quickly within the TikTok app, so it can't be bigger than this. So this means that if we click on some kind of 3D model, and if we click on download 3D model, we need to be sure that the format and the model we are downloading is not above five megabytes, because otherwise we can't use it. So in the case of this little rabbit here, there is um, the GLB 3D format. So potentially we could use FBX, we could use GLTF, we could use GLB as well. I think USDZ is Apple only, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so what we can do here is use the GLB texture size 1K. And you don't have to figure out what all of these formats mean. Just be sure that um, you will use GLB, GLTF or FBX and uh, just choose the one that has the smallest file size and it's usually GLB, so probably go for GLB. Uh, yeah, so then uh, we can download it. I already did that and put it into uh, my folder. So this is the Rabbit uh, 1 GLB. And uh, the next step is to open up the Effect House uh, again. And then we can go to import an asset. So before we can put something in our scene hierarchy, we need to import it first. So add asset import uh, from computer. Then we can um, navigate to the folder where we got this. So it's three models. And then there is the rabbit model and we can just open it. And you can also see down here the support types of the effect house. So this is FBX, GLTF, GLB, OBJ, but OBJ doesn't have uh, animation info, info, so this is already not so great if we got something that is animated. So let's click on the rabbit, open up, and uh, just import. And now the rabbit is here in our scene, uh, in our assets. And now we need to put it in the scene hi hierarchy. So let's first of all go into the replace me here, click on the skeleton, uh, right click and delete this one. We won't need it any longer. And instead, we can put in the rabbit. So there's materials, there's textures, but we need the, um, the rabbit itself, so the 3D object. So let's drag that in the scene and put it under replace me. Okay, so we don't see anything. Why is that the case? Um, if, we don't, if we zoom in a bit, we can see there's actually something. So the rabbit is just very, very tiny. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's somewhere here hiding uh, and we just need to increase the scale so let's um, click on the scale button just select the middle here and just drag it all the way up uh, it should stay here in this area so let's just see how far we can go so drag it all the way up and then use the move button to move it backwards like this so it's still in the area Okay, so it's still a bit small. Let's try to drag it somewhere here. Um, maybe we can just go ahead and adjust the scale of the whole bounding box. Let's instead of three, maybe increase it to four. And I think this size is quite reasonable, especially as we're also talking about a rabbit. And um, now it's a bit under the ground. So let's drag it up so that these 
boxes here are somewhere let's reset this view so these boxes are somewhat on the ground so the next um, step we can do uh, of course we see that the rabbit does not have any textures on it it doesn't uh, look uh, painted so let's um, choose the rabbit model in the scene and right click and we want to expand this object this shows all the little parts that this uh, 3d object is made of but the one we are looking for is the one with this globe i don't know if it's a globe but this icon and then we can see the material so it it's using um, the material um, a251 whatever and now we can go into our rabbit and oh yeah there's only one material so we could have also just look for that here so we are now in this material and um, I can already see the error here it doesn't have texture on so we can just click on texture on and as soon as we got this the rabbit is now looking cute and painted and we can move it a bit forward and take a look at it so this is already looking quite cute and quite nice we could just put this on a phone and show it to our friends right now but we want to make it a bit more realistic by adding some shadows so let's go up to the uh, model to the rabbit model and just um, collapse everything oh wait we need to still do something here so expand it again we need to go down to the object and enable cast shadows so still nothing is happening and this is because we are missing still two things the first one is we need to also enable the directional light so this is going to imitate our light source to also cast shadows and also we need some kind of object to cast the shadows on and I guess as we are mostly on a flat surface a plane would be the perfect fit here so let's just go and add the bounding box right click add object and then select a um, plane so here's the plane um, but we still need to adjust the rotation and the size so let's just rotate it on the x-axis by minus 90 and then we can improve uh, increase the scale maybe do like something four by four let's see how big that is um, so yeah it would probably would probably be um, around the place where the rabbit is also running around as we can see the plane is not in our scene currently so let's change that by dragging that in the bounding box and then as soon as we also move the rabbit the scene is going to move with us okay so i think the rabbit could potentially cast shadows here um, we can see it's a bit so the feet are a bit um, through the plane so let's just take the rabbit and move it on the y-axis up a little bit so it shouldn't be flying let's just zoom in here and take a look that it's somewhere um, somewhere here okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to apply a material to the plane so it will cast the shadows and effect house already has a pre-made material for us so let's go to assets plus uh, then material and there's the matte shadow material so let's click on this one and click on the plane and then just drag the material on here and as we can see we got actually a little shadow here it's a bit too much for my taste so let's go back to the directional light and decrease the strength of the shadow like this okay so now we got a little rabbit with a shadow and let's just try it out on the phone so let's see how this will look like so in order to try it out you need to open the uh, TikTok app on your phone and next up you need to click on this little preview in TikTok button here on the computer so it's going to generate a QR code then uh, go to your discover page and click on the scan uh, QR code button on the right top corner then it will just take the phone hold it in front of the QR code hold the phone somewhere where we want to place the object so it's taking a little bit and as we can see now there's a little cute rabbit oh it's so cute we can click on it and we can move it around by that and it's really nice it's looking great and um, this is something that might really 
uh, impress our friends if we show it to them. So really nice. So what do we do in order to publish this now? So of course publishing is uh, only allowed if you have the rights for the 3D model. So you need to take a look at the license of the 3D model that we downloaded if it's even allowed to publish it. <clears throat> so as this video is only for demonstration purposes and it should just be for me and for fun, I'm not going to submit this specific model but um, let's imagine that we had all the rights and would be sure that we are able to make this official, then what we could do is the following. In my case, I would just click on submit and then you can do some kind of subscription. You need to add a um, thumbnail, maybe make a little picture or video of your effect and then you can upload it and um, it will take some time because they will check whether everything is fine it's um, and, and, and if everything is good, it will be published on TikTok and you can use it and show it to your friends and actually anyone in the world can potentially use this effect in their video. Okay, so this was just a very little overview of the effect house and I hope you like this one. If you want some more tutorials on how to create augmented reality without coding in the future, let it uh, let a comment in the uh, under the video. And uh, thanks for watching. I see you next time.